everyone, welcome back to the Homestead Challenge. I'm Brittany. If you're new here, I would love it if you could hit that little subscribe button. And while you're at it, head over to my Instagram right here. I post weekly inspiration on beginner homesteading challenges and different things that I'm learning to do. And if you're anything like me, in 2020, you made a sourdough starter. If you haven't already made your sourdough starter yet, pause the video right now. It takes two ingredients. Look in the description box below for the directions and make it. And I will see you back in one week. For those that did make a sourdough starter this year, I wanted to show you several different things that you can do with it that are not making bread. I tried to make bread several times, as you will see. And the first time it was pretty dense. The second time, well, you'll see what happened. And the third time it turned out pretty good. But if bread making is not really your thing, then I wanted to show you there's so much more you can do with this pretty little sourdough starter that are delicious, hearty, and fun to make. Keep on watching. I wanted to start off with a simple sourdough skillet. I was introduced to these by Lisa from the farmhouse on Boone and I had never heard of it before. Basically a sourdough skillet is any kind of deliciousness in a cast iron skillet covered with a sourdough mixture on top. Lisa has a ton of different recipes for these with all different kinds of meat. Ever since I was introduced to them, I've been trying it many different ways. I've done steak and potatoes. Uh, I haven't done chicken yet, but you absolutely can do chicken. This has been our favorite way so far. So first, I saute a bunch of onions, um, two to three, just depending on the size onions that I have. Once the onions start to get translucent, brown, and crispy, I add in a pound of grass-fed ground beef. Now, if you don't have a lot of room in your skillet, it's safest to remove the onions and make sure that there's plenty of room for your ground beef to get completely brown all the way, but I had plenty of room in there, so I just decided to put them all in together. While the ground beef is cooking, I'm making the sourdough topping. So it's a cup and a half of fed sourdough starter, three tablespoons of butter, and two eggs. Then we're going to add two teaspoons baking powder, also a teaspoon of salt, and about a teaspoon or so of garlic powder, and just mix that all together really well. I like to add in my peppers last just because I think that they take less time to cook. I barely cook those and then I pour the entire sourdough mixture on top. This basically creates almost like a breading for the top, almost like if you were to add biscuits to the top of a stew. Next, a layer of cheddar cheese. You can kind of use as much as you want. I usually use about a cup, cup and a half. And then you are going to bake it in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. This recipe is so delicious. It's so filling. No matter what you put in it, I think you're really going to enjoy. So something that's, I guess, a little bit harder than the sourdough skillet, but not really, are sourdough pancakes. These are so good. First, before you start anything, make sure that your cast iron skillet is preheating. Then we're going to mix all of our dry ingredients together. We have two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, We're gonna mix all that together in the mixer and once combined, we'll add in our wet ingredients. This is going to be a cup of sourdough starter right here. I have not found a way to do this and not make it a giant mess. You can also see the flour all over my shirt. Once you kind of get that in, you're going to mix in a large egg and two tablespoons of melted butter. Also one and a half cups of milk. I actually used buttermilk for this and it made them very, very thick. I think you should just use regular milk, but if you do use buttermilk, you're gonna to wanna to add more liquid. Uh, perhaps even a little bit of water. As you can see, I tried to be fancy and use my pancake batter dispenser, but for a batter this thick, I probably should have just used a spoon. In our house, we like our pancakes a little bit underdone. It's really to your taste when you decide to flip it. Don't start flipping it though until the edges are starting to curl up and you'll see a few bubbles coming through. 
and there's a perfect stack of sourdough pancakes. These were honestly so good. We like to do pancakes at least once every weekend. So the sourdough pancakes have been the perfect addition to our weekend brunches. And finally, sourdough bread. So I've made this before. It wasn't great. It was just dense and just all right. But I decided to try a little bit different recipe and see how it went this time. So we're starting out here with a cup of fed sourdough starter. If you keep your sourdough starter in the fridge, make sure to feed it twice before trying to make bread. I'm also here adding in two teaspoons of salt. There were already about four cups of flour in the pan to begin with, and then one and one fourth cup of filtered water. Now you're gonna mix this all together with your dough hook, and this took a lot longer than I expected. I'm obviously, as you can see, not a very careful baker, not a very careful cook. I don't really have patience for much. So typically when I make my regular artisan bread, I just mix it up a little bit, and then once it looks like a ball of dough, I let it go. And it's never very pretty, but it's always delicious. But for you guys, I wanted to make sure we had a pretty sourdough loaf. So I'm mixing and mixing this, honestly, probably for five to 10 minutes. Uh, it may be even more. What I'm doing here is actually a test where you see if it starts to be stretchy and almost stringy and pull apart. And as you can see, it definitely was not ready yet. I decided to knead it by hand a little bit just to add the warmth of my hand. And that really helped a lot. I'm pulling it apart here and it's nice and stretchy and it gets nice and thin and that's what you want. So I'm going to put her in a bowl with a lid or if you don't have a lid, use some beeswax wrap on top and put it away for about uh, eight to 24 hours. I did it overnight. Then it's gigantic when you get to it the next day. So you're gonna punch it down and then start to reform it into another ball of dough. And once you've packed it down again, you're gonna put it away again for two to three hours. Then you're gonna score the top. I decided to score mine in a star shape just to be festive for the holiday season. And then I sprinkled some flour on top. I used parchment paper here to put it in the oven so it didn't stick to my Dutch oven. And as you'll see, the parchment paper caught fire. The smoke alarms were going off, the dog was freaking out, the baby was crying. So we're gonna try that again without it. You see my Dutch oven, it's disgusting. It's clearly well seasoned. I don't need to worry about anything sticking to it. I put it in without the parchment paper this time. This is a completely new loaf, by the way. And there you have a perfect beginner sourdough loaf. I call it perfect because it's not burnt. <laughs> You're gonna to wanna to wait for it to cool completely before cutting it or it actually can change the texture of your bread and then cut and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this week's Homestead Challenge. I hope you learned a little bit more about sourdough and some fun things that you can do with it that are not bread. And this just goes to show that sometimes things don't always work out. Such is the lesson for 2020. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below what your favorite sourdough recipe is. As always, I have links in the description for all of the full recipes and instructions that you saw here today. Thanks again for watching.